Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to Swayam Prabha DTH 16 channel. My name is Ariba Shabir and we have been discussing English language teaching. We are covering up the module assessment and today we will discuss various forms of assessments including authentic, performance, portfolio and self-assessment. So before we go ahead, let us quickly recapitulate of what we did in the last session. In the last session, we discussed the concept of language assessment that aims to measure the proficiency of a language user in any given language. Besides, we understood the differentiation of the two important concepts that is assessment and evaluation and we learned that evaluation is a systematic technique of analyzing subjects merit, worth and significance using framework governed by a set of norms. Besides, we had gone through three important concepts, diagnostic assessment, formative assessment and summative assessment and we learn that a diagnostic assessment is a form of pre-assessment or a pre-test where teachers can evaluate students strengths, weaknesses, knowledge and skills before their instruction. We also learn that formative and summative assessments are widely practiced components of classroom setting that report ongoing and final progress of the learner. In addition, we learned that teachers and students of English language deal with various assessment procedures in their lives on a daily basis. And then we learn the application of the assessment, what, when and why should we use assessment techniques and how they are helpful in uh, promoting the growth of learners development. So, we had gone through the new developments that is being facilitated by the assessment techniques in language teaching and learning and we got to know that uh, competencies of teachers are also required in order to assess students successfully. Now, as you know, we are going to focus on three important concepts in this classroom. The first one is the authentic assessment, the second one is the performance assessment and we will also learn the portfolio assessment. In addition, we will look through self-assessment as well. After this session, you will be able to understand and reflect on oral language assessment, reading and writing assessment and in addition, you will be able to view the historical background of the technological tools that are available in language learning uh, assessment. Now, let us first look up at this concept that is authentic assessment. Look up at this slide and let us try to think on the definition that is given by Melly and Pierce. In 1995, they say that authentic assessment is basically the multiple forms of assessment that reflect students' learning, achievement, motivation and attitudes. Like you see, there are number of, you know, factors uh, that are included in the authentic assessment. So, it is not any kind of or a kind, you know, a general uh, assessment, rather it is inclusive of so many qualities. And what are these qualities? These qualities are achievement, motivation, the attitude and the learning of the learner. So, as a whole, this provides the view of the authentic assessment. Besides, Wiggins in 1998 gave six characteristics of authentic assessment. So, uh, the authentic assessment includes these important uh, uh, points and uh, you would be amazed to know that Authentic assessment in the classroom assess the ability of students to use information in real world. So, it is not just the bookish language that you are testing. 
rather you will get the opportunity to assess the students learning when it comes to the application of that learning in the real world. So, it makes a relatable combination between those two components which are important. The first one the classroom learning and the second its application in the real world. So, authentic assessment gives a whole view of it. Now, coming on to the second point the characteristic which Wigan in 1998 gave was that problems are often unstructured and provides a scope for more than one right answer. It happens that you give a question which has multiple correct answers. So, uh, at that time you know authentic assessment will help you because it does not give you uh, a simple black and white board. Or rather it gives you the opportunity to look the answers in so many ways. Uh, multiple answers can be appropriate at the same time depending upon the social and political and economic factors influencing it. So, authentic assessment is basically a broader and uh, a relevant classroom uh, assessment which is quite getting successful in pedagogy. Besides, students are asked to study the procedure thoroughly that are typical to the discipline. So, in authentic assessment, students are given the process uh, of how to go through, uh, they, they are measured in a certain way and uh, their whole uh, view of their competencies are being analyzed. Coming on to the next point, the assessment is done in situations as similar to the context in which related skills are performed as possible. So, like I said in the beginning also um, it is not just the theoretical part, but uh, authentic assessment provides the learners and the teachers the opportunity to test the learning in the real world. So, context plays an important role in authentic assessment. And the fifth point as it is mentioned over here that students are expected to demonstrate a wide range of skills. Sometimes listening, speaking, reading and writing all four skills are included in one uh, um, frame. So, that kind of test is basically an integrated one and therefore, uh, that becomes a little uh, uh, technical, but uh, it gives a wide uh, range of scope in order to understand the learners capabilities and the growth of uh, the learning. And uh, uh, we cannot ignore the fact that authentic assessment provides uh, good feedback, it gives you extensive practice and it gives you a number of second chances to you know improve, to grow uh, in order to solve the problems. So, authentic assessment are widely used in language learning not simply because it is a kind of assessment or it is being in trend, but it has a broader scope with respect to its implications. It connects the theoretical part with the real world and it uh, tests that how far the learner can apply their learning in the uh, context. Uh, now, let us look up at the two different concepts when it comes to authentic test. One is the authentic and the other one is the non-authentic. However, there is not a sharp differentiation between these two, but I will try to put up in the form of questions that how can one uh, form of question be different from the other. So, if you look up at this slide, you will get to know that literature review does not provide sharp dichotomous categorization between these two uh, as types of assessment. However, according to Wiggins in 1998, there exists a continuum of authenticity along with which assessment falls. So, for instance, what happens is that an inauthentic test asks you to write a paper on laws for example, and an authentic test would be more applied one, it would be more concern of an in depth knowledge of the learner and his ability to use it in real life situation or context. So, this question can be written in the other way as well and that could be presented that write a persuasive essay on why a law should be changed. In this way learner will be asked to put up his a point of views and uh, he will get a chance to express his opinions, 
expressions uh, in a more applied way. Therefore, there are two forms of writing questions uh, giving a test and one could be uh, authentic, the other could be non-authentic. An authentic one would be more related to the real life situation. Now, coming on to the next concept that we are studying over here and that is performance assessment. So, what is performance assessment uh, according to an uh, author? It is a form of testing in which oral or written response is assessed. So, it just not one, but the two uh, kind of responses are included and the performance assessment requires the learner to perform a task. So, an activity could have been given, task is presented in front of the learner and it is not that uh, the learner is given a particular option, but a variety of uh, 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 a variety of parameters are uh, judged when it comes to performance assessment. So, the learner has to perform and show his abilities and that would help the teacher to look the uh, strengths as well as um, the uh, weak areas of the learners. So, learners are required to accomplish complex and significant tasks. When we design a syllabus which is quite task based oriented or activity based, then at that time performance assessment is applied. And by integrating uh, this kind of assessment, you may assess the learner's prior knowledge, you may go through uh, the learner's recent learning that he has uh, acquired recently and also you will be able to get to know about the important skills that a learner has in order to solve realistic and authentic problems. And this view was given by Herman and Ash Pesher who uh, talk performance assessment through the lens of so many factors that include background knowledge, uh, coming knowledge, the ongoing information and the listening and speaking and reading and writing skills uh, and the application of these uh, important uh, skills in the real world. Now, in addition to it, let us understand the characteristics that are included in performance assessment. So, not just that these definitions qualify uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the heading of the performance assessment, but a lot of other factors and characteristics are also included. So, let us first see that an expanded response is constructed by engaging learners into performance or by creating a product. So, we see that response is something which is incorporated and learners are engaged in the task. It is not just one way, but a number of people or you can say their peer members are grouped and their performance is recorded. Then second point as it is mentioned in the slide says that learners use high order thinking skills. So, critical thinking, high order thinking skills, their ability to think in different situations, in challenging situations, in smooth situations, their ideas, responses in lows and highs are being taken into consideration when it comes to performance assessment. So, learners actually use high order thinking skills to respond open ended answers, right. Uh, in uh, performance assessment, it is just not that the grammatical accuracy is judged or just uh, the uh, listening capacity is judged, but a range of skills can be taken into consideration to analyze the learners uh, performance. Now, Coming on to the next point as mentioned in this slide, it says that tasks are authentic because it is a part of authentic test. So, it is more applied uh, kind of uh, assessment which means it has its existential value in the real world. Learners get to know about the learning in the real life uh, situation. They find themselves engaged to use that information in the real world context. So, this application part 
is really important when it comes to authentic and performance assessment because it gives a way to the learner and it tells the learner that we are near to the goal of reaching to, uh, uh, to, to reaching to our objective. Now coming on to the fourth important characteristic that is tasks are often integrated right and uh, comprising of all the skills such as listening, speaking, reading and writing and like I mentioned in the beginning it is not just that one particular linguistic or uh, communicative aspect that is included it comprises of range of skills. So for instance if you give a students the role play to perform they will be able to demonstrate listening skills uh, reading skills and at the same time you will find a range of linguistic skills also because they would be using vocabulary while articulating at the same time their grammatical accuracy can also be analyzed besides you will see how fluent they are going and how fluently they are coordinating with their partners so collaboration cooperation soft skills linguistic skills communicative skills and in addition to uh, a range of other things like their prior knowledge with respect to that particular situation their learning which they are going through and their special abilities or skills that are required to take up this course now coming on to the next point as it is mentioned over here there are derived procedures and strategies for solving complex problems so it provides the in-depth information of the learner's performance and his knowledge so performance assessment plays an important role because it gives the uh, broader horizon of the learner's potential now coming on to the next type of assessment and I am sure you would have heard this kind of assessment uh, in uh, many forms uh, not just that you make portfolios in the form of uh, traditional uh, uh, books or paper, uh, files but you see a lot of electronic portfolios are also being used throughout the world. So what is actually a portfolio? We will try to look up at this slide and uh, drive the meaning of the portfolio and its use. Arts and Spandal in 1991 said that portfolio is the purposeful collection. So it actually tells you your development through the course of time and it tells a student work that exhibits to the student or others her or his efforts or achievement in one or more areas. Uh, we have a collection of memories for example or you uh, may develop writing skills uh, if you have incorporated your writing uh, part from the very beginning of your uh, uh, life. Let us say you started going to school and you eventually recorded each and every moment in the diary. Eventually you will form a book or uh, a diary which will consist of number of events and then with time you will see that the writing skills has also improved. So this kind of record is actually a purposeful collection to see that how much growth has taken place, where your graph is going, is it going upward or downward and most of the time we see that the graph goes upward because portfolio helps the learner himself and the teacher to see the rate of the growth, to uh, see the efforts that are uh, being given when it comes to uh, 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 applying uh, essential uh, uh, skills. One of the important alternative methods, uh, alternative methods for authentic assessment is portfolio because it is a broad and it is an open platform for learners who became an active participant and perform extensively. Now why uh, we are saying that broad and platform why these two concepts are used here because we would like to tell you that a portfolio gives you the opportunity to go through the learner from the very beginning and, uh, and most of the times we see that we provide the test and this test measures some kind of uh, abilities right and after that your student is graded with some marks but 
there are possibilities that uh, with regard to social and uh, economic factors or if there is any stress something like that then learners would not perform and then grading the learner a competent learner into novice one i mean there could be a variety of possibilities with regard to the learner's uh, performance so in this way portfolio can help you a lot if the performance of the learner in the test is matching with the portfolio's results i think it would increase the reliability uh, of the test therefore uh, what i'm trying to put over here is that portfolio assessment is quite large huge and broad it has an open width because it provides the learner to show the skills and the growth over time and uh, instructors utilize a full fledged opportunity for understanding the learner's progress diagnose the students strengths and weaknesses and instruct them accordingly let us take the example of writing skills and uh, you are writing diary uh, let's say from your 6th grade and from then onwards you are continuously doing it so we can analyze that your grammatical skills are increasing however the coherence is not found at the beginning but later it was developed and then we found that the cohesive devices were not used appropriately at the beginning but with time it was also developed or you we can say that the coherence and the cohesion were missing and it is still missing so mainly we will now focus on developing coherence and the cohesive skills in order to make your writing more advanced so portfolio assessment will give you a higher look uh, towards uh, the uh, to, towards improvement now coming on to the next point portfolios are developed haphazardly over a period so maybe you know portfolios are not intentional you started writing but it was not that uh, you will be judged one day or your uh, uh, strengths would be analyzed some day it would be just like the pleasure that you would have been practicing for so long but if you uh, provide this in the form of portfolio as a teacher uh, you i can get a lot about the writing skills so it is essential to understand you know context and purpose of the learner's product and the criteria for assessing so what kind of portfolio you are looking for uh, is there any purposeful collection that you have done if not can you provide any informal collection to the learner if it is not personal yes you can and uh, broad uh, platform uh, for learners uh, created when it comes to the portfolio assessment besides this there are three criteria three approaches towards a uh, portfolio assessment first by evaluating each piece of work and giving average grades second by using an analytical uh, scheme to distribute grades for different performances and third by adding all the allotted grade numbers and categorizing it in a single grade for all pieces contained in the portfolio so this these are the three basic approaches that how can you look the portfolio assessment and categorize it in different grades so first you can evaluate and then you can use your analytical scheme to distribute you know grades and then thirdly you can uh, give uh, cat, uh, uh, give grade to each uh, uh, skill or the piece that is contained in the portfolio there is one more concept which i mentioned in the last session as well and it is important to incorporate because it gives the learners the chance of self realizing their errors so when it comes to self assessment let's quickly look up at this slide and see how it goes through in self assessment students are asked to apply strategic efforts to achieve specific goals so ultimately here learners play an active role and learners uh, identify their problems so they put strategic efforts they are being guided with some strategies on how to look up at their work and find out the problems and the strengths obviously but it is the effort of the of the, of, of their uh, uh, of the classroom pedagogical uh, condition where they uh, analyze their work now 
in the second point as mentioned here self assessment helps the learners uh, in a way that learners become self regulated and they become active participants they are motivated to make choices decisions and utilize time and resources effectively ultimately it is in the hand of the learners to see where they stand for so they can decide what is better for them on what is not what is challenging for them what is difficult for them to achieve and what is going smoother for them and since they know themselves they find a better platform to uh, help themselves and that is one of the essential component to include in the assessment criteria so let us look up at this slide again and see that how uh, you know uh, self assessment help the learners and make them efficient in so many ways and when the self assessment happens in peer groups collaborative efforts take place so collaboration ultimately results in learning and the combination of the collaboration and the cooperation would effectively uh, increase the results so let us look up at the other point that says that collaborative efforts are encouraged that develops cooperative and friendly environment like uh, you give uh, a writing passage to the learners and after completion of the passage you then give uh, uh, their writing to somebody else somebody who is among them and then you keep on exchanging their write ups in that way and uh, in this way learners will be able to collaboratively work they will be able to find out the uh, work areas the scope of improvement and ultimately their collaboration the friendly environment and of course uh, the ultimate goal which is to make choices just to scrutinize themselves will be encouraged now coming on to the next point it says to make it more feasible learners use their prior knowledge to make it more correct and also develop self criticism of their own work at this point of time it is not the third person or the fourth person who is giving the guidance or giving suggestions or recommendations to them actually they, they become active and they themselves are the part of the system so they are making decision for themselves and since they become self critic now they know where they stand now they know whether the glass is half full or the half empty so what i'm trying to make over here is that learners get to know where they stand what is their prior knowledge how to correct what to correct and when they self criticize they eventually develop the strategy also to improve themselves so this point makes a very valid statement and uh, coming on to the next thing that is computer based self assessments are found to be very friendly nowadays computer based assessments are more private and uh, they can give you immense responses as well as well as immediate uh, answers and the replies and the you know the scope of improvement as well so computer based assessments are very prevalent these days in the market and uh, uh, there are a variety of software that are available uh, they record your responses and at the same time they revert to you with the correct answer not just that they provide explanation of uh, the answers and this is becoming quite important because it gives the learner the choice of auto become autonomous and at the same time uh, it uh, elevates their learning now coming on to the other parts of the sentence it is relatively easy because it's not time bound they can do it any any time at any in any setting so they find quite easy feasible and uh, uh, there is no as such calculation or man resources uh, uh, in the process but uh, computer calculations are uh, feasible enough to help the learners easy to score and then you know time saving is there because you need not to go at a center or a school to do it so computer based uh, assessments and computer based self assessments are providing a broader scope for coming up with time saving non threatening valid reliable for comparing and making decisions uh, they develop the autonomy privacy and uh, at the same time they get the guidance also because software coming up with a variety of techniques and support and help 
nowadays teacher at the same time uh, teacher is uh, playing an important role in the classroom but at the same time computer is working as a tutor in the tutee it is teaching us and it is also taking your teaching to uh, make others learn so a lot of uh, uh, roles are being played by computers and in this regard computer assisted language assessment computer based assessment computer based self assessment are getting successful coming on to the next point they have the unique virtue of developing the habit of reflection and self evaluation which is ex itself an extremely valuable educational aim uh these scores are uh, are available and uh, uh, when you get the view of your performance your reflection is also displayed and you can compare your performance from one test to the other suppose you have given one test and uh, you can another you can take another mock test then after some learning take another mock test in this way you can measure your growth and without any time constraint or place constraint uh, anything which is uh, which acts as a barrier so computer based as uh, self assessment is getting popular although we have a separate session to talk on computer technology in language learning but here let me tell you that assessment is inclusive uh, uh with computer nowadays now let's talk about oral language assessment how spoken communication is being assessed so various peer and collaborative activities have been introduced in the classroom to measure the students ability of systemizing information presenting selected information from the stored information in an appropriate way and working collaboratively to construct better social relationships so oral language assessment was difficult to uh, conduct before nowadays it is easy because large number of teachers and educators have accepted the fact that if we incorporate the task and cha uh, challenging activities and um, uh, uh, peer member group uh, formations and so on so we will be able to analyze the learners uh, information in a broader framework and uh, you know when when they do work they collaboratively perform so the idea of assessment reflect instruction it is a constructive tool which helps in progression and it begins by identifying learners goals and activities and reach out to the task expected from students to be accomplished now oral language assessment was though difficult but uh, if you include certain parameters those linguistic and performance and communicative one and make it flexible with regard to the students uh, competency you will find some amazing results oral language assessment is still done earlier we were more focused on reading and writing assessments we used to see that how a person can write well or read well but now it is uh, not constrained to reading and writing skills our second language and foreign language um, competency is more expanded to uh, uh, to analyze learners listening as well as spoken language so nowadays all four skills can be judged we can uh, target on all uh, the four important components that make language learning successful and therefore let's go on quickly to reading assessment there are few purposes to do reading assessment which include evaluating and diagnosing reading behavior of the student monitoring their progress supplementing and confirming information gained from standardized or criterion reference test uh, we can uh, know a lot about the reading capability the comprehension ability of the learners and by uh, knowing the a uh, learners uh, progress and their uh, information we can set 
a kind of material that can be pros prescribed to them. So, a standardized or criterion reference test can help the learners uh, and the teachers to find a way to express about their abilities with regard to reading skills. Now, assessment not only establishes the unique identity of an ESL learner, but it also helps him to move from being novice to advanced. Besides, there are other strategies to follow such as looking for tasks or instructional activities. Some of the reading activities are retellings that measure the ability of reading comprehension among learners. And besides that, you can make a checklist that identifies reading skills and the ability of applying reading strategies, keeping anecdotal records that can be utilized to assess reading skills and reading comprehension strategies. A teacher uh, can conduct closed tests to measure and evaluate reading skills. Making reading logs can also be used to identify reading comprehension, response to literature and choice in reading. Mainly we look for how a learner can make inference. Is he able to find out the meaning of the vocabulary words that are there in the text? What if a learner does not know the meaning of a particular word? Is he able to relate the word with the other uh, words? Is he able to make inferencing uh, successfully? So, these are the things which you eventually look when it comes to testing reading ability. And when we provide reading comprehension exercises, we see that learners are able to understand the gist we see whether learners are able to locate specific information. They are able to solve the puzzles that come with the uh, comprehension. So, are they able to successfully uh, convert into, uh, are they able to successfully perceive the meaning of the uh, text? So, that is what the reading assessment uh, aims to look for and though there are several purposes, but mainly we see that uh, the tasks and the instructional activities that we are providing uh, the efficient users of the language. Now, let us see the slide and identify our learners standing with regard to different levels. So, at level A, learner is fluent who can read literature to grade level, select reads and finishes a wide variety of materials. At level B, it signifies that the reader is working as a bridge who take initiatives to read chapter books, reads and complete materials, understand new words, uses references to locate information, have good knowledge of literary elements and genres, read silently for extended periods. The level C reader refers to the expanding reader who starts to read short stories reads with guidance, make use of reading strategies, retells what he has read, plot characteristics, characters and events, recognizes types of books and prefer to read silently for short period of time. Now, this level D takes you to another reader who, uh, who is quite at the beginning stage, who relies more on print than illustrations and can identify names mainly able to locate the specific information, words by sight, use sentences, phonetic structure clues can be uh, widely understood by him and begins to read silently, retells beginning, middle and end. Coming on to the level E, it refers for developing readers who sees himself as a reader, read books with word patterns, knows the relationship of the letter and sounds, able to do encoding and decoding, retells the main idea of context, identifies simple words and relies on print and illustrations. Now, coming on to the next level, level F, which talks about the reader who pretends to read, who is not sharing uh, the kind of varieties that other readers were uh, uh, displaying. This, guy, this reader uses illustrations to tell about the story and he or she participates in reading activities, has knowledge of sounds, letters, recognizes the names in context and memorizes pattern books and rhymes and plays with words. So, 
these are the level of uh, reading and uh, you can grade them in accordance with it. This is quite uh, a standardized criteria of leveling your learners. Now, coming on to the next important part of the session that is writing assessment. Like oral, like reading, we have the importance of writing assessment in our second and foreign language pedagogy. In writing assessment, we analyze individuals demonstration in which authors take prompts, ideas and convert them into self initiated themes or topics. Therefore, writing uh, gives a clear idea of how a writer is putting up his perspectives, ideas, opinions and expressing with uh, the themes and the topics that is given to him or he directs those topics uh, in association with the context. Coming on to the second point, writing assessment is regularly directed as a major aspect of language learning and acquisition. So, writing assessment was also used prior to the oral assessment. Ro oral assessment developed at a later stage because people were not sure how to assess the oral assessment and also they were not very focused on the communicative aspect. So, with the emergence of communicative competence and the importance of the listening and the spoken uh, proficiency, uh, they, they started uh, focusing on the integrated aspect of language learning and teaching and therefore, writing assessment is an inclusive part of the uh, language pedagogy which is regularly directed and it is a major part of the language learning. You cannot just ignore writing and can include spoken and similarly you cannot you know do it white vice versa. Coming on to the next point, an authentic assessment of writing includes writing prompt, criteria of writing tasks and assessment, writing prompts include questions or statements that students address in their response. So, writing gives a variety of information about the author and uh, like uh, cohesion, coherence, linguistic aspect, communicative aspects all can be reflected uh, when it comes to writing. Uh, there are uh, levels of writing like in reading, let us go one by one. So, level one uh, says that the writer who gives a text can draws an image to convey meaning, use single words and phrases and copies from a model. So, level 2 states that the writer initiates to convey meaning, compose simple sentences, phrases. He, she uses limited and repetitive vocabulary, not a range of sentences can be seen and uh, uh, vocabulary spells in inventively and uses does not use mechanics. So, uh, this kind of writing runs short of uh, variations when it comes to simple compound complex. Also, there are repetitions and a limited set of, uh, uh, of sentence frameworks can be seen. At level 3, you see that the writer can express his her ideas expressively, compose sentences, organize paragraphs with high frequency vocabulary, he or she makes grammatical or mechanical errors. Besides, we see that level 4, a uh, writer can express ideas clearly with the composition of multi paragraph organization, effective transitions from one sentence to the other, the coherence, the cohesion, a large vocabulary which is mentioned as vivid vocabulary with few grammatical or mechanical errors. We cannot say that the learner would be error free, there would be some, but a range of uh, uh, vocabulary and the transition sentences and the paragraph organization are so vivid that such small errors are a bit uh, not taken into highlight. I am continuing here in this slide as well, level 5 and level 6. At level 5, writer can convey meaning clearly, logically organized sentences, can present multi paragraph organization, a varied and vivid vocabulary with a few grammatical or mechanical errors. And the last is the level 6, 
which is the ultimate uh, level and uh, here the writer is highly proficient. Also writer writes effectively with clear introductions, developmental ideas, has given a clear conclusion, also gives smooth transitions that from one uh, sentence to the other there is a proper and smooth deviation. Then there is a varied and vivid and precise vocabulary with a few or uh, uh, way less mechanical errors. So, with this we have understood the four important components of assessment which are also regarded as forms of assessment. Now, as I told you uh, computer based assessments are prevalent in the modern day world and assessments have become easier with the advent of technology. Let us quickly see that how computer based assessment evolved throughout the history. So, as you see in the slide in 1950s computers offered games, puzzles and test compilers which were designed to identify errors of syntax and later of style in computer programs. So, in 1950s with the introduction of the technology uh, the variety was not available there were few offers and those offers were in the form of games and puzzles like a closed test or a kind of compilers which will help the learner to see where they stand and also those kind of uh, assessments provide a good reflection on how the syntax and the linguistic styles are being uh, created. So, uh, a, a lo lot of, so it was a good start, but it did not give a variety. However, in the 1960s we saw that the creators of learning machines brought different results. It broadened the horizon of the computer based assessment and in this period assessment played a big part recognize the value of computers for delivering learning programs. Now, computers were not only used for uh, identifying syntax or playing just uh, games that include puzzles and tests, but they are also included in the classroom pedagogy. A lot of learning programs could have been delivered in the 1960s. In the 1970, a huge growth of multiple choice based testing in education was introduced and it enhanced the attractions of automatic uh, marking and it reinforced uh, the cycle of, uh, of, of, of uh, testing uh, co through computer based assessment. In the 1980s, we saw a huge variety of educational software which was developed during uh, this period and less emphasis on assessment was given. So, software or you can say uh, these days we are saying it in the name, uh, we are saying it as computer assisted language learning. In 1990s along with continuing growth of multiple choice testing integrated learning system were also developed. So, not just writing or vocabulary or syntactic structures were analyzed. Now, a whole view of language skills could be analyzed and therefore, the integrated system that means encompassing integrated learning systems were developed. Since the 1990s, we saw the explosive growth in the use of technology and we also saw the advent of the WWW and the internet came into the world and it began to give a new dimension of language learning and teaching and assessment. So, uh, testing was on demand and people started up taking up online, then um, it uh, replaced somehow examination model. If you see many international based testings today like TOEFL and TOEIC and IELTS and other exams, you see that there is an option of taking at home. So, this has become feasible because of the technology. Now, coming on to the conclusion of this session, let us see that through authentic assessment learners are given an opportunity to know what they have accomplished and what is essential for their progress and development. The second point says in performance assessment oral or written response is assessed 
and requires the learner to perform a task rather than selecting from the given options. So, in performance assessment, the performance is the priority and uh, learners are given the opportunity to perform a task and teachers then find a way to look up at their strengths and their growth, their learning. Through portfolio assessment, we find that instructors utilize a full-fledged opportunity to see the learners growth over time and we can understand the learners progress, their diagno uh, diagnose strengths and weaknesses and instruct them accordingly. To make self-assessment feasible, learners use their prior knowledge to make it more correct and also develop self-criticism of their own work. In self-assessment, we learn the concept of self-criticism as well because by self-criticism, learners become automotive and they learn the idea of taking a decision for themselves. So, they look up for their own strategies and they also find a way to come out from the problems that they had faced. So, this is a holistic uh, view of assessment that gives the uh, learners the opportunity to look up at the performance, to find out the problematic areas and see where he or she can grow up. And accordingly, because the learners know themselves, they can develop the self strategies to uh, enhance their growth. As mentioned in the next point, in oral assessment, authentic activities provide purposeful exchanges of information and oral assessment can help learners to understand and process for the purposeful speaking. So, uh, we have gone through the oral assessment reading assessment and writing assessment. In oral assessment, we studied that authentic activities can eventually help learners to understand the objectives and work on uh, that way. And oral assessment was not common uh, before and nowadays because of the inclusivity of uh, the activities and tasks, it has become easier to implement oral assessment. So, we not just focus on reading and writing skills, but also focus on oral assessment. By proper planning, appropriate instructing, observing and reflecting, reading assessment can be implemented. So, we learned the levels also and we got to know that by implementing reading assessment, we can know that how well a learner can comprehend and guide himself towards making him a better reader. Besides reading, we also gone through the writing assessment part and it says that it measures the student's ability to persuade, to explain or to convey experience. So, not just the linguistic abilities, but communicative competencies are also measured and student's ability to explain, to uh, organize thoughts into paragraphs, to effectively produce their ideas in the form of introduction, to summarize and to conclude of what they have said are basically taken into consideration through writing assessment. So, writing assessment is an important component like speaking, like reading, writing also play an important role in knowing the learner's efficiency. The last point as it is mentioned in the slide, computer based assessments are available across the globe. We came to know about the number of years and we also looked on the progress of the computer based instruction. We tried to find out that how computer based teaching and assessments worked in a certain way. So, earlier the games and puzzles were introduced in the language learning pedagogy, but then later language learning programs were incorporated. And then later we identified that not just the programs, but the, the computers are playing the role of tutor and the tutee. Now, computer can uh, provide you the opportunity to become autonomous and at the same time you become independent. It gives you to to practice, it gives you to practice independence and privacy. 
So computer based assessments are helpful these days and they are becoming popular a variety of tests are available in the market and these tests are measuring the students capability however there are limitations there are questions when it comes to the integration of the all the four language skills there are questions with regard to the reliability and the validity of these tests however the work is on the way and many research teams are dedicated in developing computer based assessment tools in order to help learners to make learning easy so here are the references i hope you have got a clear idea of how the assessment looks like what is the purpose of the assessment what are the characteristics of assessment through assessment what criteria do we assess what are the parameters of assessment and not just these frameworks but also we have gone through the certain important uh frameworks that are listening speaking reading and writing skills and are important in language learning and teaching pedagogy assessment is a crucial part of language learning and without assessment learning cannot happen it gives you the opportunity to look the learners in a broader framework and it also helps you to work in a progressive way So with this we have come to an end of this session I hope you enjoyed it tomorrow we will take up a new topic and that would be based on technology with this give me a leave thank you very much for joining understanding oneself understanding others understanding society at large understanding the nature these are all driven by basic human curiosity we would all love to understand why things happen what happens what is the final outcome why certain things fail these are all exercises that we perform in various domains of knowledge therefore knowledge in various domains you would realize they are actually social artifacts they have to be rooted into historical perspective they have to be culturally salient and there would be socio political reasons behind this whether you talk with respect to engineering sciences whether you talk with respect to physical sciences biological sciences social sciences that's the reason why humanities and social sciences should be understood by all of us the knowledge that is segregated that is divided with respect to areas specializations all of them needs to be understood in its context and what provides the context it is the social reality how do you correlate knowledge in a given domain with the cultural reality with the social reality with the socio political compulsions okay how do you understand the law of nature okay in its totality and for doing that you require the understanding of humanities and social sciences say for instance if you are trying to understand the effect of a particular bacteria a virus any microbe how it affects behavior how it affects the organism human being you start looking at it from a pure biological point of view if you are trying to look at a particular type of a wavelength say for example you are emphasizing on the understanding of the effect of radiation on human life you are looking at things from a physical point of view you are looking at the corresponding changes inside the body you are looking at the physiological side of the uh, understanding of the information you are trying to understand why despite knowing the risk that is inbuilt in the process why still human beings engage into it you are looking at it from a pure behavioral point of view why society at large admire things 
which has full of risk. You are trying to understand things from a pure sociological point of view. Why people use particular uh, set of words to explain those experiences. You are trying to understand things from the linguistic point of view. So, there are whole lot of things and then finally, you try to combine all of them to say that what are the guiding principles in life. Then you say you are looking at life, you are looking at humanity from a pure philosophical point of view. And this is what social sciences courses provide you. They provide the context to you in which you would be finally positioning the understanding of the knowledge in any given domain. It could be engineering, it could be sciences, it could be medical sciences, it could be social sciences stuff, it could be humanities stuff. So, con contextualizing the knowledge is what humanities social science courses help you obtain.